Hi, I'm Neil. Welcome back to the SCAP Garage. Today we're going to be replacing the inner axle seals on this 2007 F250 with a Dana 60. Uh, it's a little bit unique design is that the inner seal actually doesn't have a stop, so you're going to need a special tool to do that, otherwise you can cause damage or leakage problems uh, to the new seal. So let's get started. Pull the back cover off uh, on the differential cover. Uh, for this particular style, you actually don't need it off to pull the axles off, but I just want to show you a quick vision of the back side, and we're going to mark uh, the differential bearings so they come out in the right direction, go back in the right direction. We have the back cover off um, before we remove the carrier assembly. You want to make sure you mark the end caps, whether it's with a magic marker or a paint dot, or you might want to just mark it with a light punch dot, um, and then you'll be sure that that's assembled in the correct position when you put it back together. You also notice that on this style, there is no lock pin that's going to hold this, the center bolt in, because these axles will come out without that type of removal on this, on this particular style. I wanted to show you a quick view of the differential, but as I mentioned, you can pull this axle assembly out, out uh, prior to removal of that back cover. So we're going to be removing the rotor, we'll take the four-wheel drive hub off, and then we're going to be sliding out the whole axle shaft. So let's get started on that. In order to remove the clip inside on this hub unit, uh, they can be a little bit tricky because there's a number of different snap ring pliers that you might have to try, but what works best is something with a little longer stretch and not too bulky. You've got to be able to get in there around the axle shaft to take, take that clip up. I'm not trying to move. Remove the hub inner clip. Now we're going to take the four bolts off on the back side of the hub. Uh, there's two on this side and two on the other side of the knuckle. After the four bolts are removed on the back side of the hub, uh, you might have to tap it with a hammer for a little while, use some rust penetrant on it. Once you get a wedge that starts going, you can pry this out with one or two pry bars uh, and remove the hub assembly. After removal of the hub assembly, we're going to have to knock out this inner knuckle seal uh, in order to remove the axle shaft. Without removing that, uh, you can't pull that axle shaft out. They can be a little stubborn, so you're going to have to knock around with a punch, and you'll have to replace it with a new one uh, when you put it back in place. With the axle shaft out, uh, we'll just be removing the bearing cap bolts, and then we'll pull the differential assembly out. Next, we're going to be removing the inner axle unitized seal. There's a number of different tools in the marketplace that you can use to remove that seal, whether it's the OEM unit or some sort of aftermarket unit that you've designed or you found online. We found that the QK4647 tool works really well. You can find that online. And you'll be able to add an extension to remove the longer axle inner seal. We're going to go ahead and pop this one out right now. Once we have the old seal removed, I just wanted to show a quick picture, uh, and it's a critical feature on this design. If you're not careful when you install the new seal, the actual new seal will fall all the way into the inner tube if you knock it in too far. Uh, if you don't knock it in far enough, of course, in either case, you're going to have leaks. So we're going to show you the right tool and the right way to do the installation. To do the installation, we're going to be using SCAP part number 15553. You see this identical seal to the replacement. And we're going to be putting that in place with a special tool. This is a TS4807. Um, what's unique about this is the driver plate tool. It will only let the, the seal go in to a certain depth. And that's critical. If it goes in too far, it doesn't go in enough, you're going to have leakage. So let's get started and do the install. The seal itself, I lubricated a little bit with uh, some new gear lube oil. That will help and prevent any type of damage when we put the axle shaft back in place. You can see that this new seal rests 
and nests perfectly right in place on this drive plate. And of course, this little spacing in between is the perfect depth for the installation. Got to center that in place. Then install the drive tool. Here we have the seal perfectly nested in place. Uh, you can see by using the right tool, you get the right fit, you know, prevent any type of leakage down the road and right away. Uh, we're going to go ahead and install everything in the reverse order. Uh, for more information about this seal number or the tools that we used, just take a peek at the sheet at the end of the video on our tech tip. And for more information about this installation and others, join us at www.skfpartsinfo.com. Or for more interaction, join us at Twitter, SKF Parts Info.